This is Eric Fell, consulting attorney for Project Council Media. We're coming to you from the Georgetown Corporate Council Institute in Paris, France. Delighted to be joined today by Dean William Trainer. Uh, Dean Trainer, congratulations on your recent appointment and thank you for speaking with us today. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Eric. My pleasure. Uh, the, the conference is being hosted in Paris, France this year. How are you enjoying France and uh, meeting with the alumni so far? Oh, it's terrific. Uh, Georgetown really has an international alumni body. And so it's a pleasure to, to meet our alumni who live in Paris and, and who live, well, actually this program brings people from the United States, throughout Europe. Actually, somebody's come from Bangkok. So it's really, it's a, it's a terrific experience to, to meet them. Uh, this is my first Corporate Council Institute in Europe. Uh, but Paris is a place that uh, I know well. I've actually taught twice at the Sorbonne. So um, for me, it's kind of a homecoming. Dean, by all accounts, the conference appeared to be a great success. Did you have any goals in mind for this event? And if so, do you think you achieved them? I think it was a great success. Thanks very much for, for saying that. Uh, it really has two goals. One is to increase Georgetown's prominence in Europe. Uh, Georgetown is very much a, a global law school. I think uh, in the United States, we're one of the handful of law schools that really focuses on preparing people for global practices, have students who come to Georgetown from around the world. So we're building on a great global base, but this is about in increasing our prominence in Europe, and uh, today's conference absolutely did that, beginning with the appearance of Christine Lagarde in the morning, which was uh, really a very exciting for us, and I think uh, will bring great attention to this conference and, and great attention to us. Um, secondly, we wanted to have a high-level discussion of some of the most important issues facing uh, corporate law practice in Europe, and we did that. It's a remarkable group of academics and practitioners who talked about things like dispute resolution, our, our changing regulatory environment, uh, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and anti-bribery statutes in various countries, and how attorneys should advise clients in their face. So, it was really, it was an extraordinary helpful discussion to, I think, all of the participants. I understand you're not the only recent hire at the school. Can you tell us more about the new faculty you've added and how you think this might benefit the program? Well, we had six new hires this year, which is really an extraordinary number. And we're building on a faculty that I think is unparalleled in the United States in terms of its scope and ambition. A remarkable faculty of scholar teachers. Uh, this year, we, we added six new hires. Uh, we hired two new faculty members in the tax area, uh, Jake Brooks and Itai Greenberg. Um, tax is uh, an area of great strength for Georgetown, and this was a terrific way to build on that strength. Uh, we hired an education law specialist, Eloise Pashikoff. Uh, we hired uh, three lateral hires, uh, Tanina Rostain from New York Law School, who's one of the leading scholars uh, in the study of the legal profession which is an area that we focused on. Uh, Mitt Regan and Jeff Bau Brauman. Can I start again? Is that, yes. uh, okay. okay. Uh, Mitt Regan and Jeff Bauman have started a center for the study of the legal profession. It's really, it's the best uh, center of its kind. And Tina will add to that. Uh, we also hired uh, David Super from the University of Maryland who is a remarkable scholar of administrative law and government benefits law, remarkably creative and thoughtful. And we hired one of the United States' top public law theorists, Larry Solomon. So it's a remarkable group and they're building on the remarkable depth of the faculty and I, I just couldn't be more excited. Georgetown's clinical program is ranked number one in the states. Can you tell us more about the program and why you think it has been so successful? Georgetown is a law school that has always been uh, a path-breaking law school, figuring out how to prepare people for the practice of law uh, in a way that it's remarkable and innovative. Um, and a centerpiece of our approach is our clinical education program. And so we have, as you said, the, the program that's generally thought to be the finest clinical education program in the, in the country and it prepares students to do a, a broad range of lawyerly skills while they're in law school because they're learning to practice uh, under the guidance of masterful scholar teachers who really know how to, how to teach people about what the practice of law is about. So we have people working in the domestic violence area, the criminal justice area, the immigration area. Uh, this year we hope to expand it and to have uh, 
a higher teaching transactional law. So we're, we're very much focused on, on building what's already the best program in the country. And again, clinical education is about giving people, while they're in law school, experience practicing so they learn how to be terrific lawyers from their very first day of practice after law school, because they've already done it. Uh, we're also focused this year on other ways in which we can build on our Washington base. So when I think about Georgetown, two dimensions that our great strengths are that it's a global law school and that it's the premier Washington law school. And we're focusing on how we can maximize the use of Washington. So this year we have seven what we call experiential learning courses, which are classes that combine a seminar with a field placement. So someone may be studying foreclosure law and then have a placement representing people in court. Or they may be studying climate change law and then representing uh, clients who are involved in figuring out issues having to do with the response to climate change. So we have seven courses like that this year. We'll have more than double those kind of courses next year. So that's again building on our Washington basis and just as Georgetown a generation ago became the first top law school to really focus on clinical education, we're now focusing on supplementing that by becoming the top law school and, and the path-breaking law school in the field of experiential learning. Looking around at the name tags of the attendees, I can't help but notice the number of Georgetown LLM alumni. Uh, interest in the event in general seems to be very high. Your, your thoughts on this? People are so excited about this event and the room that we just uh, are holding the meetings in absolutely packed from the beginning when Christine Lagarde spoke at the first session through the end of the day, not an empty seat in the hall. And that's partly because we have an incredibly deep and loyal alumni base. Uh, we have more than 200 LLMs from outside the United States every year. So we have a great presence in Europe. We have a great presence in every country around the world. But then combined with that is just the excitement of this top flight program. So it brings together corporate counsel, government officials, leading lawyers in private practice, academics, and everybody just wanted to, to find out what the participants were going to say. So, as I said, it was a packed hall. Beyond your clinical and LLM programs, I understand the school also has a Center for Transnational Studies. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Well, as I said, Georgetown is really focused on preparing people for global practice. And that's, uh, as, a, as a legal academic, that's the biggest change that I see from when I graduated from law school 25 years ago. 25 years ago, American lawyers had almost exclusively domestic practices. Now, American lawyers, whether they're representing clients in litigation or doing deals, their practice is global in nature. And Georgetown is, is taking the lead in figuring out how do you prepare people for that practice. Uh, one of our signature programs is something that was established three years ago, and we call it the Center for Transnational Legal Studies. It's in London, and it involves 12 law schools from around the world, each of which sends faculty and students. The students come for a, a year, the faculty typically come for a semester, and they study together. So it's it's uniquely a law school that doesn't have a national home. Everybody's on equal footing. And so you can have faculty members from Israel and the United States and Ireland and Singapore studying matters of corporate governance. You get the different perspectives of the different faculty members and you get the different perspectives of the students. So they're all working together and they're all learning from each other. It's, it's so exciting uh, and uh, recently received the Andrew High School Award, uh, which is one of the most prestigious awards in international legal education. Uh, and our faculty, looking at the first three years of its existence, uh, voted to continue its operations for another five. So I was there for the first time watching its operations uh, in London about a month ago. And I have to say, I was really dazzled. So it's, it's a great experiment and I'm looking forward to seeing it, how it evolves in the years ahead. William Trainer, Dean of the Georgetown University Law Center, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Thanks very much, Eric. It was a pleasure to be here.